Hello and welcome to December Daily, days 11 through 13. This is a packed episode and I'm starting off by showing you this wonderful book. I've showed it in one of my previous videos. Um, this is The Complete Costume History, a massive, massive book that I love to bits. And um, I do have it linked below in the as a Amazon affiliate links if you want to splurge. It is not the cheapest because it is such a huge, huge book. But I will be using one of the pages or a copy of one of the pages from this book today for the first day. And it's this picture that you see right here on the bottom left that I will be using. Um, also, I don't want to forget to mention that as you might know, I'm collaborating with wonderful Irid Landgraf on these December dailies. So we are trying to alternate having our December dailies up. So almost all days of the week, you have some some December daily to watch between the twin between the two of us. And um, her channel is linked below, so don't forget to check her out. So as I'm showing you. Some of these beautiful images in this wonderful wonderful book i yeah i wanted to tell you that i was inspired for this first spread by a post that i saw um by actually a a, a video that i saw by jay hart and i will link the video below it's a very quick video that she has and she made something similar with a printout, I believe, that she got from, I think maybe an Etsy shop. I, I think she has it linked in her video below. So you don't need this book to do what I'm doing. And you can do it with anything, like any image that you have that you can fit to a double spread of yours. Um, I wanted to do it with something from this book because I need to use this book more often because I love it so much. And by the way, this image on the left, I, I want to live right there. I just need my, my hookah and I'll be happy to live there. <laughs> so I made two copies of that one image. I enlarged them a little bit so that they would fit um, across one of my double spreads. And I thought this was a great opportunity to cover up the stitching that I had done on one of my previous spreads. So the idea is to use one of these images and just glue it onto the whole spread so that is going to be your background so i try i, I fold it and of course i fold it in the wrong place first because it wasn't covering my stitches so i had to fold it again and then it worked and i'm just going to use my glue stick and by the way, I printed this on just some sketch paper because I, I didn't want to use regular copy paper. The sketch paper is just a tiny bit thicker, but what I like about it, it has a rough surface. So I like that better than the, the um, smooth finish of the regular copy paper. Now with the second image, I'm cutting out or I'm fussy cutting the images here. And maybe I cut out too much, so maybe I should have left them connected a bit more. I don't know. In the video, the problem is in, in Jay's video, she doesn't show how she does it. She explains it. And so I think that is why I kind of mess up here. So she said she folded it in eight parts. So that's what I'm doing here. And now I, I'm just folding the outer parts to... To go to fold inside and I'm going to glue the two outer parts onto the book but leave the rest um, just freestanding basically and somehow I, I just couldn't get it to work the way I thought it is supposed to work uh, you will see I, I try folding it in, in different ways but somehow it just didn't work so if any one of you knows how to do this better then please let me know because I would love to get this right so here you see I struggle a lot um, to try to get it fold right but it just doesn't look like it does in her book 
<laughs> but I must say I still think it's a very fun and cute page anyway so it's okay I'm, I'm, I'm not stressed about it, but it would be nice if it would work the way it should work. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't regret doing this page because um, we learn something with each page that we do, right? And uh, it's still fun to have it in my book. So then I decide <laughs> when in doubt, ink your edges. I always do that when I don't know what else to do and this time I didn't want to forget the date so it is the 11th and so I'm just using my tiny round punch punch out the 11 and I'm going to stick that onto one of the dresses I'm using my three in one glue and then I decided to just journal around that and I wrote your journal is the perfect place to experiment and play as it will most likely not go into a museum. The fun is in trying out new techniques in order to grow as a creative person slash artist. How boring would it be if we already knew how to do everything? So that's my first spread quick and easy. <laughs> and fun <laughs> so going on um, the next day day 12 um, this one I I think was my favorite page so far um, looking at the process because I just had so much fun I also experimented a lot and learned a lot and um, just had so much fun with this so this page was inspired by Maria and Maria has an Instagram and YouTube channel which is linked below which is called House of Crafts by Maria and she had a video of this beautiful page that she did using a brown paper bag in her journal and that really inspired me to try one of my own and this was one of the spreads you know where where do you ever have these where you see a YouTube video and you you just you're obsessed with it and you just have to try it and you have to like it's the first thing you have to do because you just have to get it out of your system I don't know if you've ever been there but I've had this a few times and it's, it's actually a great feeling because when you do it then you're really in the flow and you really enjoy enjoy what you're doing and that's that's what I had with this spread and so I love it so much just because the process was so enjoyable so what you see here is a bunch of ephemera that I pulled out um, which I thought I might use so here I have one of these Christmas brown paper bags and I just cut away all the bulk of the bottom and now I'm going to start playing with it and my goal for this was to make a lot of different pockets and tuck spots and tags and just make it a really fun interactive page so I'm starting off by gluing the bottom together because it didn't need to open as much as it was opening and now I'm trying to figure out how to fold it to make as many pockets and tuck spots as possible. So I decided folding it three ways was too bulky so I decided to go with two ways and now I am cutting away the sides because I wanted those to be flaps while still leaving the bottom part to be a pocket. So I have these two flippy things now and the middle is still a pocket. So next I wanted to glue the sides together as well but of course the glue stick was not strong enough for that so I added some tacky glue so now we have a flat pocket on the left we have this flap on the end now I'm using my tacky glue um, to form also a pocket on the right side so you see there you have a pocket there and you have a pocket on the left and now I am Cutting this slant here to make a, another pocket on the front 
and I've inked all my edges and I'm using my tacky glue instead of my 3-in-1 glue just because I don't have a lot of 3-in-1 glue <laughs> left and I'm kind of saving it for the times where I really need it <laughs> um, and I'm trying not to order any more for now because I want to use up some of my other glue but it's really hard I don't know if I will manage to not order more of the 3-in-1 glue I'm just so obsessed with it I never thought I'd be obsessed with the glue <laughs> but I think I am so then I found this piece which fit perfectly on this pocket this might be from my friend Raisa I think the top one is with the flower anyway so then I glue that on and I for actually forgot that that one was a pocket as well a side pocket but I will realize that the next day <laughs> and now I have this whiskey label vintage whiskey label and I'm putting that on the other side of the flap and I wanted to add some cheesecloth underneath that just to give a little different texture and interest and I'm going to put that or glue that onto the um, cheesecloth and then I'm just gonna cut around the shape of the label just so that it peeks out a little bit and then I'm going to glue that onto that flap. So as you can see, this is not a tutorial. <laughs> this is just watching me experiment because I'm not explaining it well enough to be a tutorial because I am just figuring this out as I'm going. I had no plan on how this was going to look. And once again, this was a page that got a life of its own, with, which is just so much fun. And also, I, I didn't plan on making this a Christmas page or a Christmas themed page, but kind of, I don't know how that happened, but it kind of just happened that it did become a Christmas page, sort of, like a hidden Christmas page, and you will see why. <laughs> um, but, you know, looking at it from the front when it's closed, you don't see it's a Christmas page, and I think that's kind of cool. So now I have this cute little pocket, which which... I believe came in a happy mail some time ago and I, I thought that was that was great to be another pocket and so now I'm looking for something that I could use to decorate the pocket in the front and so I'm going through the ephemera that I picked out so all the ephemera I picked out basically is more or less neutral and then I found this little piece of vellum which was wrapped around something and I thought that was perfect for this little pocket and after inking it up I just glued that down with my glue stick inking around the pocket as well so that is a little pocket and again I'm making that into another pocket a side pocket as well so it's a top loading pocket plus a side loading pocket next I think I'm yeah I'm looking for something that I could put into the pocket on the top so I find this little piece which might have been something that came in a package where I ordered some ephemera from Instagram I think that was like a little bonus thing because I am sure I did not order that but it's lovely and I'm just backing that with some cardstock inking that up and now it's like a little tag so I'm sticking that in there and now this is this is the first piece that puts a little bit of Christmas into it and I'm looking for something and this is from your creative studio from the November box I will link that again down below if you want to see the unboxing and also the information of where to order these boxes so I I'm using one of these stickers and it says Merry Christmas uh, or wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Backed it again with the beige cardstock and I'm cutting that down a lot to fit into my little side pocket. Just inking around that and sticking that in. So now we have two little tags there. Next I wanted to put in a tag on that top loading slanted pocket so again I'm cutting some of my cardstock making sure it fits in there inking that up and 
making a little collage on the front there after rounding the corners with my four millimeter corner punch I believe I have that link down below as well so now I'm using some of these papers to make a collage just a little mini collage inking that up as well these beautiful stamps I will use one of those later I got at um, our last journal meetup here in Vienna where we always kind of exchange some ephemera as well which is so much fun we were nine or ten at our last meetup it was so much fun so if you're ever in the area or if you live in Vienna please shoot me an email email address is listed in the description box we would love to meet you and have you at one of our meetups we have so much fun it's such a nice exchange and sometimes we journal in each other's journals it is just really a lot of fun and there's always new people and we have people in all stages of their journaling beginners and more advanced in different types of journaling from bullet journal to art journaling to junk journaling it's so much fun so I think that's that's it with the collage so you see I added some cheesecloth there as well to keep the theme going I wanted to add a little tab but my tab punch um, the tabs with that made with that were too big so um, not a problem I'm looking for an alternative here and I find this sticker with the numbers and I always love numbers so I'm cutting that down a little bit that is going to be my tab I'm going to glue that onto the beige cardstock cut it out fold it in half pink it up and use my tacky glue to just glue that on top so there we have a little tag the B is of course for Barbara <laughs> The back is empty, but we'll have something later on. So we have tag number three done. Now I'm thinking what else to do. I needed a tag for that pocket there. Again, going through some of my ephemera. I had this tag, which I'm not sure. I think that might be from the Tim Holtz ticket booth die cut and stamp set I will link that down below so yeah this is where I use the lovely um, piece there that I, I got from the journal meetup so I also made that into a pocket and now I'm looking for some ephemera that I could stick into the pocket of the tag And I don't use that one, I use this one. And on the back, just making sure that the size fits. On the back, I'm going to stamp as well. Or I'm going to actually put something on the, st on the back. So this is the stamp set that was also in the November Your Creative Studio box. And I am stamping on some coffee stained paper. And it's this cute little stamp, you'll see it in a moment. I'll show you a close-up. So I'm just gluing that on to that ticket. And it says North Pole number 386. What a cute stamp. And I'm just going to stick that in that little pocket of the tag. And stick that into my secret pocket. <laughs> So next, I wanted to use this beautiful stag, and that is going to be the next tag for my pocket on the right, the bigger pocket, and I'm stamping, stamping him on some vintage book page that I have. Look how beautiful he is. And I'm using this, <laughs> this ruler, it's a vintage style ruler that I got um, last year in summer on our trip to California um, when we went to Hearst Castle so if you're ever in the California area and you have not been to Hearst Castle 
oh my gosh you have to go it's an absolute must it is one of my favorite places on this earth I have been there multiple times taking different tours and I every time I go there I am in awe of the beauty and the tours and all the details of the of the castle and oh my gosh obsessed so as you see I have glued him onto the same cardstock and I was measuring how large the tag is gonna be so that I know how much room I have to stamp something on the bottom so using that same stamp set I stamped what did I stamp happy holidays on the bottom inked up the edges so that is my large tag and when you put it in there the happy holidays just peek out a little bit next looking at that tag no don't tackle that yet what am I doing oh yeah I am stamping another Christmas image on that floral image right there so it's getting more Christmassy as we go along so you can't see it very well but it says Merry Christmas there and it has some bells then I decided to add something on the back of that tag so that was gonna be another stamp from that set I really like that set I'm enjoying the stamps a lot so that one says Santa Claus post office because that stamp on that side looks like something from registered mail maybe so I'm sticking that in there now I'm tackling the back of that one and I'm trying to see if that one fits with Santa in his sleigh with the reindeers so I am stamping that on the back side and that is also really cute so becoming more Christmassy as I go along <laughs> and checking my tags again seeing what I still need I thought I was done so now I'm taking these stamps I got these locally um, a few years ago and I'm just gonna stamp the date which was 12 on some of this scrapbook paper and cutting it, inking it, and gluing that right there on the corner. So looking at it like that, you really wouldn't see that it's a Christmassy page. And then the next morning, I realized I forgot to put something in that pocket right there. I forgot that it had a pocket. <laughs> so with new energy, I went about this task and chose some papers again and I'm using the same beige cardstock and I'm going to make a little collage a mixed media collage on that one so I'm starting off by cutting down this uh, sticker and I'm gonna stick that on and this is going to be a background I wanted to keep the numbers theme that I had used as a tab on the top tag and I'm using some white gesso to mute that down because I just wanted that to be a background. So I'm just using my finger to put some gesso over that. And I dried it in between, did it again, dried it again. And yep, it's because of the heat gun that I used in between. It stuck to my, to my book page because it has glue all over it. And so I'm going to have to do something with the back. And then for a third layer, I wanted to use my tiny spatula because I wanted to, um, I wanted it to have a little more texture than, than what I can do with my fingers. So I'm using that to spread that around a little bit. And after drying that, that is what that looks like. So you can see the numbers have totally moved into the background. And now I kind of wanted to do like a little painting and so I'm using this little house and tree stamp which is from another stamp set um, this is an old stamp set I've had for a while and I don't remember where I got it from unfortunately so first stamp the tree and then the house so that is the image 
and next I'm also stamping the words winter wishes which is in the same stamp set I will check maybe it's from Aliexpress if I find it I will definitely link that for you below and since that was too big I decided to separate those two words and that makes them fit a lot better so I am inking those up gluing those down so that's our little winter image and last step I'm going to just take a very cheap brown colored pencil and giving that whole image a little bit of a frame to look more like it's actually a painting so that's what that looks like and I think it's really cute love how that turned out and then I had to figure out something for the back side because I did not like the way it tore on the back so I found this other sticker which says ice coupon book so perfect for our little winter image there and I just had to cut it down a little bit because it was too wide and I am after inking it up gluing that down on the just the three sides to form another pocket <laughs> so I think this is number eight now and now I need something to put in the pocket so I'm again starting off with that cardstock cutting that to the size that, so that it wouldn't stick out and I'm using another image from that stamp set which is this beautiful fox I don't know why I adore foxes and I'm adding some snowflakes to make it look more wintry so that's what he looks like and I'm inking the edges and I'm just gonna stick him in there with the ice booklet coupon so that was the front and I'm gonna stick that there so that it sticks out a little bit so now we see all the little tags that we have and there's one last one so super fun um, let me know if you enjoy these kind of spreads I'm happy to try to come up with more of these um, making lots of pockets I think these are so much fun so maybe you give it a try just take something and challenge yourself how many pockets can you make, make on one page <laughs> so moving on to the actual spread of the day is going to be a quick one so day 13 we're going to use this um, pocket that I had already made in the first um, episode and I'm going to use this uh, an image from this beautiful book page that I found uh, this this book that I found at my goodwill um, a few weeks ago and I was so fortunate to find this. This is about birds from Great Britain and each one of these pages is more stunning than the next. These are really heavy pages so they're like cards. Look at how gorgeous these are. Absolutely stunning. And I thought I would use this one because it looked kind of winter wintry because of that tree. And that is going to be my tag and we put it in there and we're done thank you so much <laughs> no we'll do a little bit more on it so we are going to first of all back it with some coffee stained paper so I just cut that to size glued that on and I'm again going to use my little corner rounder to round the edges cutting away some of the excess of course I'm inking this up and next I'm taking my my jar of upholstery fabric scraps and I wanted to find one to use as a tab for the top so I'm going to audition a few of these to see which one I like best
So it's between these two and in the end I go for this one because the colors are perfect and this yellow gold makes the yellow gold of the birds come out nicely while still also having some of the other colors, the green of the tree and such. So I thought that was really perfect. So I'm just going to use, this time I use my 3-in-1 glue. So that's one of these moments where I want a strong glue. So I'm using it and I'm just putting it on the outer two edges. I did not want to glue the whole thing because I don't want it flat. I want it to still have the nice curve on the top. So you see there, it, it, it um, well you'll see in a moment there, it keeps its beautiful curve there instead of just being flat. So there is a beautiful tag, it's not done yet. I wanted to add some more stamping so I am again referring to the Your Creative Studio stamps and I'm using this one which says wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I'm using this beautiful color which um, I have no idea where I got this from. I've had it for a really long time and it's this beautiful honey color and I just adore how that color looks with this tag. It makes the gold of the birds come out better. So love, love, love how that turned out. And then we're going to tackle another prompt. And let's see, which one are we going to use? Number six. Who do you want to invite if distance was no issue and what would you do? This is a great one. So I am going to read you what I wrote on this tag. If distance was no issue, I would love to invi invite all of the wonderful crafty friends I have made throughout my YouTube and Instagram journey. I would first meet up with them in a nice cozy Viennese cafe with wonderful cakes and then take them to all of my favorite places like my two favorite flea markets, my Goodwill store and other art shops I enjoy. Maybe we would also go to an exhibition. And lastly, I would take them all home so we can craft together. Now wouldn't that be amazing if we could actually do that, if you could all come here to visit me in Vienna and we would have a fabulous time. Yeah, I like that thought a lot. That would be amazing. So that is our day 13 and I do also add the date so I again have one of these cards from Bow Bunny which were on a 12 by 12 sheet I had gotten them on a craft fair and so just stuck that 13 there next to the bunny and that's our page and that's our three spreads please don't forget to check out Irid's channel and keep working in your December daily journal Hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. We can hang out on the beach without freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? In Christmas times. We'll be chilling and having a good, good time.